I'm going to take just a few minutes and walk you through the steps to cut and set both a crimp button and a snap together button. First thing you need to do is clean your cutters. Now I've gone through in a different video how to clean the cutter nice and good. And what I've done is I've screwed it up into the top of the machine already. And I pretty much took it all the way up as far up as I could. I want to show you how to set where that should stop. First thing you want to do is put your cutting block down and then a piece of chipboard. Now the handle right now would be at about a 10 o'clock position and that's fine. I want to bring it to about a 2 o'clock position and at 2 o'clock I should just be touching my board. So I want to unscrew that a little bit. Notice as I get closer to the board I'm going slower so I'm not going to drop this and I'm also not going to cut into that board. So 10 o'clock I have room to get my fabric in. 2 o'clock I'm just about ready to start cutting through fabric once I put it in there. So now that the level is set, I've chosen a 60 button, so I've got my cutter ready, and I folded over a couple layers of fabric. Now you can cut through about 10, 12 layers of blue jean type fabric with this. This is just going to be cutting through four layers. But I wanted to show you a tip. Instead of folding your fabric and leaving this folded edge, if you do leave the folded edge, there's always a possibility that your fabric's gonna shift on you. So if you simply cut your folds apart, all your fabric will lay flat, and that way when you slide it under here, you're not going to end up with some miscut buttons. Now I've set my 10 and my 2 o'clock. I'm going to put the rest of my handle on. And I have this just clamped to the corner of the table. In your workroom, you actually will want to bolt this to your table. So I may have to put a little pressure against this just to get this to cut. Where again, in your workroom, you'll have it bolted down. So I'm going to come back here. Everything is set. And I would ideally be standing behind this handle bring it down and I'm cutting through. Notice I've cut through the chipboard. Completely through the chipboard. That's good. You don't want to cut next to just your cutting block. You want to actually cut through the chipboard first. And I have my fabric with holes in it, but I don't have my button covers yet because they're stuck up inside the cutter. So easily solved problem. Take a paper clip and unfold it. There's a small hole in the top of every one of our cutters. Just push the paper clip down through, and what that's going to do is give you your circles that you just cut out, plus that piece of chipboard. So that's pretty easy to do. I'm gonna get all this out of my way, uh, with the exception of my chipboard, because I wanna take the cutter out now. And I don't wanna have the possibility of that cutter falling down onto the steel setter, the steel machine, because it would chip my cutter. So I'm just going to take that out, put a protective surface down, and then it's a matter of unscrewing. Now remember that that's very sharp, so don't get your fingers underneath here. Just unscrewing with one hand, kind of holding it with another, and you'll feel it when it starts to come all the way out. This would be ready then for storage. Wrap it up in some oil, put it back in the original box. First thing I'm going to do is set one of the crimp button forms. You're going to have a two-piece setter, the top and the bottom. The bottom has a little nose on it almost, and that's going to fit into the hole of the machine. So you can go ahead and put that in now. And then the back of your button with the eyelet down slips into the hole. Pretty easy. Now the top, I want to put my face fabric face down, place my button in the middle, this gets a little tricky. You always, when you get a setter for a button, you'll get this little wood dowel and it matches the size of the setter. Now on this, let me move that for just a minute. This collar is going to lift up. So I have my fabric in, I have my button in. I'm going to push down with the dowel and lift up on the collar. And what that's going to do is set my fabric inside the top. If you've by chance cut your circles just a little bit too large, just help it a little bit by pushing the edges in. Now when you go to put this on your machine, you need to have an adapter in. So let me put that back down. This is the adapter piece. It's going to screw up in. Now I can go ahead and set the top of my button in. I have to hold on to that collar area so that it doesn't fall back down. I can go ahead and raise this up as high as I can get it, which means I have to screw that adapter in just a little bit more.
put the top of my button in. Oh, it just doesn't want to go in there today. There we go. And then go ahead and pull the handle. Now, these are made out of aluminum, so they're very lightweight buttons, which means you don't want to give this one for the road. Just until, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll feel where these two pieces just come together. That's all you have to do. Go ahead and lift up, and we've got a button. It would look like that on the back. So that one's pretty easy. So for that button, you do want to make sure you keep track of where your wood dowel is, the top and bottom of your setter, and then you need that little spacer that's going to be in here. So I'm going to take that out because the next button I'm going to set is a crimp button. I've already cut my circle for it. Now your crimp button comes with a top and bottom. Looks a little bit different and this is a little bit of a sharp edge so be careful on that when you clean it. These are going to set together like this. And I'm going to go ahead and put the top of this in. The bottom has the same little nipple area on the bottom. The top's going to go in, but there's no screw on it. There's no thread. So what you have to do is loosen up this white screw first, put it in, and then tighten it back down. These screws are going to get well used over time, so they are replaceable. You can just call customer service and get a replacement. And I loosened that one up quite a bit. I just want to tighten that down enough until that, that setter is going to stay in there. There we go. And then I want to put my fabric around. Now for the crimp buttons, you do have to start them by hand. There are small teeth here. And it's usually pretty easy if you start opposite sides at the same time. Kind of pull it into it. And you'll notice that it's going to hook under the teeth. You can't quite get it with your hand. Small screwdriver does wonders. You do want to get that fabric started underneath those teeth and then move to the opposite side and go ahead and do all the corners. So for sake of time, I'm going to move on and show you that this one is ready to go. If you were to look real close, you would see that the teeth are sticking out of the fabric here, which means I've got a perfectly covered button on the front. So to put the back on, the back has a slice in it that's going to match the eyelet, and it's got a lip on one side, flat on the other. You want to put the lip down. Line up the hole, and this is pretty easy. You simply set this all in and pull the handle down to set it. Now, I'm not going to set this one because I want to show you a shortcut. If you're only doing one or two of these types of buttons, you may not want to get your setter out. You may not want to go to the trouble of cleaning it. So what I'm going to do is pinch one side of this together, put it on a hard surface, and I'm not getting the eyelet. And then I'm going to press down with my hand, and it's just going to set that button. It just kind of snaps in a little bit there. I'm having a little trouble doing it with my sore hand today. Here we go. And what that will do is set that back on the button. So if you only have a few buttons to do, you may want to do them all by hand, but if you're going to use a green machine, you still need to start that button for the crimps before you go to your machine.